uh, costuming tips, and like I said, we're going to talk mostly about how to do this on a budget, how to do it with maybe some new costuming tips. Um, so, I live in San Antonio, Texas. Um, I have 14 years of life experience in the U.S., the U.K., and Sweden. Uh, theater in high school and college, uh, focus on costuming on a budget, thrifting, and repurposing. I do fantasy, urban fantasy, post apocalyptic, and modern costuming. I believe that costuming should be accessible to everyone and that with some luck and creativity, anyone can produce quality costumes. Uh, I will be discussing things that revolve around the idea that anyone can create the look that they desire for their life experience. Um, first, to get good results, you need time and patience as well as an open mind. Uh, dress for the event and don't sacrifice your well-being for a uh, Living in Texas, we often have uh, temperatures over 100 degrees. Um, so, Dressing for the event is very important in a place where you will pass out complete costume. Uh, repurposing and thrifting are great ways to make good casting, and makeup requires practice and patience or many, many hours on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> so true. Yes. Okay, so uh, time and patience. Um, this particular piece, um, the horns are a $13 uh, Halloween ones. Plump onto a $2 headband. Uh, and then pick up clearance flowers from like a craft store uh, and then with a lot of string and hot glue uh, was able to make it to where they didn't look like they had um, like the insertion point was hidden to where if you were wearing a wig or if you had enough hair like I used to in this picture you couldn't see the insertion points and it, everyone is um, kind of wowed by the magic of this piece because you can't see where the horns are going so it looks very organic and it cost me all of $20 to make this piece um, and the makeup is, uh, this one I actually did uh, with no costume makeup. I did costume and makeup later, but this one is literally just black eyeliner, brown eyeshadow, and then highlighter for the, like, you can't really see it in this resolution, but it's like that one across the forehead with dear spots. Um, and you can get the same ones for Halloween face palette, and if you wait till November 1st, you can buy all of the theater costume makeup for ridiculously cheap when those little public Halloween stores are trying to clear out their stuff. So uh, I definitely like November first is my favorite day of the year because I go and I just I just if I see something that I think is gonna inspire me for a costume, I go and I just go to the costume shop and I go buy all of the stuff that they're selling for like a dollar or two dollars. Not that I need more costumes at home, but you know, I'll find a way to use it. so just for the event, no amount of realism, what you see is what you get, or genre is worth your well being. The flavor is always more important than the game. This includes authenticity, unless your event specifically requires it. There's no reason you can't um, prop or dummy something up to look just like you want it. Chainmail is heavy, and I have spray painted plastic chainmail for hands and mouth. So this is plastic and weighs ounces. Like, and it is a uh, neck piece, and it goes down to the chest. It's supposed to go under your shirt. And uh, this uh, is literally snaps together. Um, it's little plastic chainmail pieces. And if you, like here, I sprayed it, and then I took it and rubbed it across the concrete to uh, basically muss up the paint and give it a little bit of a worn look. Um, so uh, the lantern is because it was for a specific character in uh, across the country. But uh, she, the faction that this player has, the lantern is their symbol, so that's why there's a lantern. And then actually that lantern lights up, and the, the wiring goes behind it, and you can just put the wiring, um, like, just inside your shirt, like you have a shirt pocket, like it can fit in the pocket very easily. So, can I ask a question? Yeah. Where did you get the things? Um, uh, theringlord.com. <laughs> they uh, supply a lot of stuff for the Lord of the Rings <laughs> Yes. Uh, they do, they have everything from like butted mail and anodized uh, scale mail and all kinds of stuff. Um, I love their stuff. I do, since I do. Um, some SCA style things where it's not important. I've also made actual chain mail and actual scale mail that's significantly more heavy than this plastic stuff. So if you're doing fantasy where you need chain mail, but authenticity isn't required, so there are some events where authenticity is required, but if it's not, it's on plastic things. They also have plastic scale mail. It doesn't, this is easy because it snaps together. The plastic scale mail uh, is a little more difficult to work with, but if you just watch a few videos, you can master it in about 10 minutes. How is that stuff for like bigger pieces? like? You get a shirt, like, I, I had an aluminum shirt, and the bottom sections and under the arms kept... So, I actually made a shirt, um, a actually full tunic, out of the larger plastic ring, so the plastic ring is one of the different sizes. Okay. And what we did was, because of those things, we 
executed laces um, on the side of the torso, okay. uh, but left the front and the back, like the full uh, chain. That way it wasn't rubbing and being uncomfortable. Um, so we, I, so basically we just modified the piece since realism wasn't something that was needed. So we just left the side out and just laced it, like cross laced it, um, to hold it together. So. Thank you. Yeah, and just read, we double, we uh, kind of double reinforce the rings on that part so it can support the lacing, but yeah, huh. like you can use it for any size of pieces. So plastic chain mill, for me as an fantasy customer, is a staple because it's so old. Yeah. It's so incredible. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, repurposing and fitting. So, uh, here I have like a, these were made <coughs> from couch cushions and spades. Uh, with the hips and the leggings that go up. Oh, I what? <laughs> yeah, I know. No, they're not. So this is fur. This. Oh. Okay. This is actually. It looks really warm, but this is actually mesh. And so um, it, it looks really warm, and on the outside of your one is really leg, but where on the inside of your legs, up through your hips, this is mesh. That fabric is a mesh. Um, and I just painted it to look spotted, and then uh, took hot glue. <laughs> with this fur and taped it over shaped couch cushions. I usually, I literally just do the couch cushion and figured out how far I wanted the leggings to go out. And then cut the couch cushions and then cut another one from the other side and then hot glued that fur down and then sewed the inside of the fur to the, to the, to the netting. Okay. So this is an apocalyptic character from Dystopia Rising. Um, and uh, which uh, the character type is called a natural one, and so they're kind of tribal-ish. So I recycled pieces from the tribal costume to the darker satyr costume. Um, to so I used to do it with the corset, and then I am male now, and corsets are not fun. So <laughs> I modified this to be part of this same costume with a completely different look. So these are both the satyr costume. This is the like uh, dappling with uh, the the eyeliner and stuff, and then this is more costume makeup, kind of like dark satyr, like wooded um, kind of thing. And then the, the the this piece here, and then also it's not really high resolution, but there's a belt that also came from the same costume. So a completely different genres, recycled the pieces, um, and it was able to create the kind of look that I wanted. Um, so. Uh, thrift stores are like my favorite place on the planet, and people, uh, they, like some people are like wary about going to a thrift store to get costuming. Um, and I can understand, my solution is just wash it, like just wash it. <laughs> uh, but the number of times that I've had pieces that I bought the base for it from like a thrift store, I, I can't even tell you. Like um, everything from like, I did like a zombie bride dress where I took like a, um, like homecoming dress that had been like given to a thrift store and like tore it up and helped to do like a zombie homecoming queen type thing for somebody. But like you can create any costume for about fifty dollars or less, which in the costuming world that's very cheap. It's very it takes patience and a lot of looking. So um, you're not going to find what you want every time, and you're not going to find what you want in every store. You just got to plan and be patient and you know kind of. Look for what you're wanting ahead of time, and eventually you'll find something that works for you. Okay, so these are some other pieces and looks that I have created. Um, this is entirely just makeup. Uh, I, in Texas, I don't want to wear hair. <laughs> that is not a thing I want to do. So this is um, a facial hair uh, technique that um, I literally just used a bruise wheel and a stubby sponge to create facial hair. Um, and then, of course, like setting, like blending and setting spray and stuff to make it look more realistic, but like when we get to 110 degrees, I do not want to, <laughs> to wear actual hair on my face. Uh, and then additionally, uh, this piece here, talking about recycling old things. So I had a, a pair of old Doc Martin boots that were completely torn up and unusable. So I cut off the top of them and made bracers <laughs> to go under this jacket. Yeah, uh, and so this blue uh, was actually a really ugly cream upholstery fabric that I found that like the whole piece was being sold for like $3. So then I painted it at turquoise and then did the like detailing work 
uh, sewed, so I had found some like white satin and did that as the lining, but then took it out to also be the lapels. Um, and then this is just like random little breads and breast pieces and then blood stains and uh, it's also for post-apocalyptic stuff, which is this character. This character um, was for a werewolf game. Uh, specifically, uh, if you're familiar with White Wolf, uh, this character was a Fianna. <coughs> um, and this was done with basically, I bought this shirt for $2 at the thrift store, I made this necklace, um, and then this is, the makeup is like with latex. So, um, and it's a like impactful, like visual um, costume, costing me about the five dollars. Um, here's a little more of my makeup work. Um, so this character, uh, all of these are actually me pretty recently. Um, stuff like this, scar work, you can learn that in five minutes. This is uh, liquid colloidin, which, uh, so I put pink lipstick, covered it with liquid colloidin, and it is a believable aged scar. Um, and then that is just uh, water activated and I make up for the, the tribal paint. And then this here is my new current favorite product, this one, is a the Maroon Paradise AQ uh, highly pigmented uh, stuff. And the thing is, is if you use it lightly, it looks like a skin stain. Um, and you can wear it and it doesn't rub off as long as you don't get it like really wet. Like you can still sweat in it and it won't smudge, but if you actually like put water on it, it will. But it looks more like a skin stain. And on the next slide, I'll show you what that character is for because I needed a character that could have sort of rainbow tinted skin <clears throat> that I could wear easily. Um, Paradise AQ. Paradise AQ, thank you. All right. So uh, this is the rainbow skin character. Um, she's a it's kind of hard to explain, but basically I needed her to have rainbows. <laughs> and um, the technique here with the flowers coming, or the, sorry, the feathers coming out of the skin is done with um, cross-aid, scar wax, um, and a makeup foundation to cover the, the edge of that. And then again, the Paradise AQ for the, um, for the skin tone. Um, but that technique um, and being able to put it on a part of my body that moved, uh, Spirit Gum isn't gonna hold at an event where you need to move a lot. Um, so I highly, highly recommend Cross Aid. Uh, get the remover, because otherwise the residue will never come off your skin. <laughs> a hard time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, this, is, this is a really fun uh, technique. Uh, I prefer coconut oil as the thing that I use to work with my scar wax with, um, because I'm not allergic to it. Um, other oils uh, uh, treat my skin differently, but coconut oil I can use pretty easily. Um, again, the... This was done with a Ben Nye palette. Um, this was done with a Bruise Wheel, and then this one was done with the Paradise AQ uh, thing. Let's see. All right, so um, things that I've made pops out of. <laughs> Leather remnants, duct tape, an old corset and a trapper keeper, uh, bags from old costumes and stitch witch, PVC pipe, ribbons, and wool fabric. So um, the shield here, Lasted for me for four years in a buffer place, like a, a, a DR. Four full years. Was made out of pink foam, duct tape, and a like leveling, uh, what it was called, like, we go to the- Trout. Yeah, the trout. It was the handle with a old backpack um, thing as the strap to hold it. So a trowel, a backpack strap, duct tape, and pink foam, and that was it. It wasn't bolted, <clears throat> nothing, like, um, and still lasted me for four <clears throat> years. So like, that shield cost me all of $20 and lasted me four years. Uh, the way that we did the decal was we had a sliding glass screen door and made the decal on the, the sliding glass screen door, pulled the decal off, and then put it on the thing because we had to take an X-Acto knife to get some of the details with the duct tape, but used a screen door, put it on the screen door, cut out the design we wanted, peeled it off, and put it onto the, onto the shield. You painted the screen door. No, no, it's duct tape. A glass oh. door. It's all tape. It's all duct tape. Oh. That's literally all duct tape. That whole, all the decal, everything is duct tape. Oh, that's kind mm -hmm. of brilliant. Yeah, because the duct tape will stick to itself, and right. like it, you know, once if you um, take a hair dryer or just even just rub it and you heat up the adhesive. So we just took a hair dryer, and like that, the decals never came off. Wow. So 
And, it, and it's in the core's phone. The core is pink phone. The core is pink phone. Yeah, the core is pink phone. Mm -hmm. So it's light and awesome. Yeah, awesome. It's, it's incredibly light. So I have, <laughs> I have a metal plate and six screws on my left arm. I can't carry yeah. a lot of weight. So like, even when I do impact play at, at like Amp Guard or Dagger here, I can't do the shield play because my arm can't physically support that weight. So I design around things like that. So I have another character, which is the, the male character with the a face paint that um, does printing, like with calligra calligraphy and that kind of stuff. So I took paper and I genreed it with tea. Um, and then I had an old trapper keeper and an old corset. So in order to make a fun and aesthetically pleasing book for them to print in, I took and I hot glued the corset to the outside of the trapper keeper because the corset had a zipper. So if I zipped up the corset, it closed the print book. And it was just two things I had lying around that made a ridiculously cool prop for that character. Um, so, bags um, from old costumings and Stitch Witch. Uh, so, this um, shoulder and back piece here was literally like a really cute bag that I then cut up and then Stitch Witch tons on to be able to have like another layer to this costume. I put this costume together in about 10 minutes. Um, I took Sharpies and made the design on the umbrella, just literally opened the umbrella and drew the design with Sharpies. Um, we had another prop that we had to make. We had to make a 10 foot tall uh, maypole for the natural one character, which is that one, the shield. And um, like we're like, okay, how are we going to get a 10 foot tall pole that is transportable and can be brought back and forth to side? So I took uh, two foot lengths of PVC, uh, female and male joints, and made a 10 foot tall pole that was collapsible because we could just take it apart. Problem is, they don't sell five way connectors every day at the like store you have to order them and we needed it like right now so we took a center uh, core and four elbow joints and just did two cross bolts to be able to make an x base to hold the the thing up okay now we have a plastic pole which clearly isn't the right kind of aesthetic for you know white plastic pole is gonna work you can't spray paint plastic i mean you can if you want to sand it and prime it it takes a lot of work instead i took some really old fabric and made it into a tube and then just pulled it over the top of the white pole and then ta-da, we had the prop that we needed with a 20 minute trip to Home Depot to be able to put PVC pipe together. So have an open mind, sometimes your solutions are gonna be a little unorthodox. Like being able to like, oh let's put PVC pipe together to be able to fit it all in a tent bag. So we put all of the pieces, everything we needed in a tent bag. We had drilled holes through the four-way base to put um, tent spikes through it so it would keep it in the but uh, it's, um, so being on a budget, because um, when most of this was happening, I was working basically a little bit more than minimum wage. And so everything I had to do was on a budget. And so now I can afford if I want whatever fabric I want, or I have a much better job. But then we had to figure out everything with kind of unorthodox solutions, because I didn't have the money to buy a lot, um, a lot of the things that I can afford now, so. Yeah, but then it requires sanding a lot of PVC for a 10 foot tall pole. <laughs> yeah. Because um, I have sanded buckets and stuff to make little chairs out of. And... Okay, cool. Things I've learned you should not do. <laughs> um, where for when it's 100 degrees outside? Uh, pretend that I am not cold when I'm freezing because it would ruin the look. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wear full face makeup to an all day event. Um, and I don't mean just so like the. The Paradise Nikki stuff that's really light, but I'm talking about like really intense like prosthetics and like you know like more poor uh, SFX stuff. Yep, no, I was not a happy camper by the end of that day. That was uh, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, if you like, if you're going to a panel where you want to work for that, that's fine. But I, I cannot wear the prosthetics and stuff all day because you do sweat underneath the the latex or whatever you're making it out of. Uh, secure anything by simply tying it in a knot. Um, they can and will fall off. So even if you're doing like the tribal belt thing where you have like just trinkets and, and furs and stuff, like please actually either grab it or sew it on. Um, don't, uh, so I, uh, make sure you always spot test your makeup for allergies because um, anything with a fragrance in it in the United States is not regulated. And like the fragrance is not regulated and you don't know what chemicals are in it. And sometimes um, people will put fragrances in makeup or they'll put chemicals in makeup that you've never encountered before. Even if you think, oh, I don't have sensitive skin, I'm not allergic to anything, there's probably something you're allergic to. So, um, 
overcom overcomplicate costuming to the exclusion of participation on a learn. Mm -hmm. So my costuming is too cumbersome or too delicate for me to be able to run around. Um, so don't overcomplicate to the point where you can't participate. Um, assume I can figure it out and not read directions or ask questions. <laughs> I'm looking at this list and I'm like, oh god, I, I still do all of these things right now. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I do all, I've broken all these rules. Yeah. Uh, oh, there it is. Do one of them. Yeah. <laughs> still do. Think wings are ever a good idea in large. <laughs> Wait, did you see one of the costumes I'm going to show you? It's always, it looks so cool. It's so cumbersome. And sometimes you get stuck in doorways. Yep. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. You gotta learn to walk sideways. You do have to learn to like, ah, yeah, walk like, sideways, yeah. Sit down in chairs correctly. <laughs> yeah. Like, you have to sit down in chairs this way. Like, you can't have anything with the back. You have to turn sideways. And if you do, you have to be like, you have to put how you build the wings. You have to like, yeah. sit like that. Yeah. So, um, these are the things that I've learned. Um, my costuming has gotten better and better over the years. I did a lot of work with theater. I did a lot of work with improv. And um, I, I love creating costumes for people and helping them and consulting them. Uh, especially like if you just tell me what's your budget, I can usually help you figure out a solution. And also ask your friends. Ask your friends. Uh, not just me, but like look around in your community and you see people who have like these really cool props. Uh, or really cool costuming, it is likely that they have a really interesting story about how it happened, like duct tape and pink foam and PVC pipes. So, <laughs> uh, back when, I want to go back. When, when I go back. Okay, credits. Um, this is important to me because my, my friends are amazing. Uh, Heather Halstead did all of the dystopia rising pictures, which was like three quarters of the picture there were all done by Heather Halstead. Um, she has a website, she does professional photography at LARPs. She does, if you have a really cool LARP character and you need a photo shoot of that character, she does personal photo shoots for people, so that also is amazing. Seth Fogarty is my partner in everything, and he did all of the Seder photos for me. Mallory e. McKinney helped me with the Seder horns, and she does um, leather work for people, um, and she's incredible. Uh, Ryan Wilson was the person who helped me with the decals on the tri tribal shield, and Brandon Lee was the person who helped me to sew the upholstery fabric because I did not have a machine that could sew through upholstery fabric. So uh, those people, uh, I would not be able to do all of this without them. And then this is my contact information. Um, either of those you can get a hold of me. And of course, this presentation will be up on Living Games website after um, if you want to see some of those photos and a little bit better resolution. Um, it'll be up on the website after the convention itself.